We are in uh, Shoftim, uh, uh, judges, and what we're doing again, we, we, we heard Yotam's speech last week, remember? It's a very long speech, and I want to go through it, so we're going back to uh, Zion. Let's go sl- a little slower now. It says, wow. to Yotam. So they told to Yotam, So he went and he stood atop a Haragarizim. He called out, he raised his voice and he called out, He said to them, Listen to me, uh, people of Shechem. And, uh, and uh, how do what do we say about that? And um, yeah, that God may listen to you. Okay, so what's going on? Who, why God? Why is he invoking God here? Who are Shofet? He is the judge. Vayishpot ebeinenu, and he will judge between us. There's all the Malbim. I'm going with the Malbim right now. Okay, so he says, halachnu ha'etzim. So the trees went. Then shoch aleihem melech to anoint for themselves a king. Vayom lezayet, they said to the olive tree, or the olive, whatever, malka aleinu, be king over. So what happens? They, uh, Malbim says, uh, the trees went. The kings made many trips to have somebody reign over them as Melech. And the parable is to Bnei Adam, to the uh, to humans. Adam eats Hasad because man is called the tree of the field. So mm-hmm. they went to establish to uh, to uh, uh, to cause a person to stand, you know, uh, to be the ruler uh, over them. And so they asked by way of saying being king. To, to, they were seeking a person who was extra fitting that would lead them in a good way. That's why they did not choose the, the crowds. That's why only their heads and their wise people, they sent, uh, were f- for them to give this chosen law. And that's why it doesn't say all of the eights and all of the trees, right? So if you look at the verse, again it says, Halchu Ha'itzim. The trees went out. Which trees? In other words, which people? The leaders. The leaders went to find somebody who was better than them. You understand? That's how the Malbim is being Medayak. He's looking at the language very specifically. It says, Rock, Halchu Ha'itzim. Only the trees went. Only those trees that made fruit, that's who, or the leaders, that's who was chosen amongst the nation to go. So there, you have three purposes here, good, mixture, and helper. So yesh, yesh, yesim, tachlito, levakesh, eich, atob, so then, the the purpose his purpose was to to seek out which was good to to enrich the soul. There were those who went out to say uh, to would cause pleasantness. And there are those who went to search out somebody in the middle. The ones who are looking for the the pleasantness of the soul that was more of the behemoth side, the animal side. The one who was looking for the one in the middle would be uh, more of the enlightened side. So that would be at the beginning. The chosen ones were the elders and the chachamim. So they were looking for somebody who was decidedly good. So now the interpreter comes to say, the zayat, the olive king, should be a king over us. Because the zayat, the olive, is this goodness. Because what it does is it brings out of the oil that comes out of it, it will be used to make light. Which is a mashal, a parable for the light of wisdom and Torah. Because 
or is called tov. This no, light is called good. You understand what he's saying? So this they agree that this sort of a man would be fit to rule. That's why they don't say let's go and uh, get a king. As Rukhi, who because he doesn't need to go and to move for this. Because the kingdom with this rulership, he would be mechay, he would obligate to himself by, he would be obligated to it by itself, because he has all of these uh, uh, traits that he can do all this, so that's why this person should be the king. So originally when they're looking at the Zayat, when they're looking for that, they're looking for a person who can uh, who can bring light to the people. Mm. Right? Um, can I make a second? Uh, hello? Is that uh, the emphatic? What is it? Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. When it says, uh, right, so, uh, hello, halchu, they surely went. Right. That would be the emphatic. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so what happens? The Zayat says to them, okay, but this person doesn't desire to rule all the people. Why? Ki he. Because that's going to cease from his completeness of his soul. Because he won't be able to, he'll have to be subservient to worrying about what people need. He doesn't want to do that. Every leader is subservient to the group. Everybody wants to be, you know, it's interesting. Everybody wants to be the president. But when you become the president of three, how many people we have in the United States? Three billion? Three hundred million? Three hundred million. I think three hundred million. So yeah. you don't be, you think you're the boss, but really you're our worker at this point. Even, you may even be the CEO, but you're, you still have to worry about me. And so I tell you what I like, what you're doing, I don't like what you're doing, so on and so forth. Mm. So, you know, rulership is not fun. Rulership has a lot of personal responsibility. So this person is saying, I don't need that. I don't want any any of this power. So he says, why should I do that? Then I will cease at Dishnei Shua Sagat Achachma. I won't be able to go for the sweetness, the, uh, and I, which means the reaching for the Chachma, the wisdom, and the influence of Nevoah, Shibo Yichbudu Elokeim, and Hashem, that Hashem gives honors uh, the people with. And those people who Hashem gives his divine spirit to, so that they are called, uh, that's what we call kavod. So then what happened? They said, Should I go to wave among the Let's hope it's Archem to worry about what you guys need. I don't want that. So that's the first thing. They went to a guy who was. Uh, or, the, the marshal, the, the they go to a person who is roy the malucha. Notice he's fit for this because of his and his connection to God, his everything else that he has, his wisdom. And he's saying, no, if I would take over from you, I no longer will have time to do these things. And you know, it's the old joke which I've said a couple of times about the rabbi who they caught studying at night. Uh, and they, they they said we wanted a finished product. We didn't want somebody who has to keep studying. Okay. <laughs> so the the truth is that when a rabbi is hired for a congregation, nine times out of ten, that is the last time he will open up a book for himself, because he they want to keep him busy. Huh? Right. They want to keep him busy with meeting after meeting after yeah, meeting, yeah. stupidity after stupidity, <laughs> and so a, a conservative reform rabbi. They, while they don't have the Gemara language that I that I will, and I think they'll all admit to that, mm. what they do have much more than I do are these the ability to deal with boards. That's what they have, because they need that because there's a board meeting every week, or every Mishigas, and they're on every simple stupid committee. committee. They're on committees and and they have to try to convince people. That's what they are pros at. Yeah, I, we, Orthodox rabbis, I'm pros. Orthodox rabbis, 
they, they try to avoid every possible board meeting there is, <laughs> and they don't like meetings. Yeah. Because they're counterproductive. And on top of that, I don't get anything done because I'm not in control. So what, why should I be there? You guys figure out what you want to do, figure out the expenses, you don't need me there. And now, by the way, every shoal, you see in the advertisements, all the shoals, Orthodox, want the rabbi to be in the board meetings and want the rabbi to be a fundraiser. So now you really took me out of the equation. I have to learn sometimes, yeah. I have to give classes, I have to prepare, no, we want a finished product, Rabbi. Yeah, yeah. We expect yeah. that when you come in, you know it all, and you can just give it over, and you have time to do everything else. Yeah. And you have to visit the sick, and you have to play with uh. the uh, youth, and you have to, uh, you have to be able to shech sh sh my cow too, <laughs> you know, and, and mow my lawn. I want everything, because that's what I'm hiring you for. Mm -hmm. I want to be the janitor, you should fix <laughs> this. Really, it's insanity, but that's <laughs> what people are doing. So. Here, what he's saying is this guy, this Zayat, is saying, no, this is all for me. I once had a rabbi in Yeshiva University who was commenting on another rabbi who would always give lectures. And he says, the principle of the Gemara is, uh, uh, how does the expression go? I'll give you the English, because I can't remember. What, I can't remember the Hebrew right now. But it's when you're, if I'm constantly exuding something, I can't absorb something. It's an impossibility. It's when I'm pushing something out, when it's being polite, I can't absorb. Mm -hmm. So he said, so this guy, and so you're saying, all he's doing is going out and lecturing. When's he, when's he learning already? He has to learn too. And so he's picking on that. But that's really what goes on. Right. So you, you see that rabbis in the pulpit, certainly, and, and beyond, they their level of learning drops precipitously compared to somebody who's constantly mm -hmm. in, in, let's say, teaching, where it doesn't drop precipitously because they, they have to teach. So they, they keep going on and on and on, and they have to look at the end of the text. And that's why the rabbis of the yeshiva, they're still very much, even though they're in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and, then, and beyond, they're still learning every day. Yeah. And they're very much into it. Now, they may not have halachic expertise because that's not what they're doing. That's not what they want to do. But still in all, they, they can pull a lot out because that's what, they're, that's what they're geared for. If a teacher is learning, then they can impart when they cease to. I don't know if that's the same in the secular world. I'm not sure. Did you find that when you're in the secular world that if they stopped learning on their own, that that's when the teaching went down? I know you said you have to always teach something new to keep yourself into it. But, you know, a lot of what you're saying, that, you know, your passion for something. Right. If you're learning at the same time, it doesn't even have to be for your class, but you have, you're keeping your mind right. active okay. learning. Right. Then learning becomes important to you and you can pass that on. If it's right. just a memory from college. Oh. Right. And that's I the... Remember English teachers bragging to Uh -huh. There you go. There and you go. just teaching the text is whatever class it is. Right. So that was the number one. Okay. So you lost the passion for learning. But, for you, but how right. do you pass on? Right. Well, it's more than that. The what, theory of knowledge. What, 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 it's more than that. He's saying that if I would lead you, I won't have time uh -huh. to do what I need to do for me. Uh -huh. And again, that's if you see, you see it all the time. When I'm any leader doesn't have time for themselves, which is why, yeah. by the way, look at Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have time for his kids. Yeah. He didn't have yeah. time for his kids. So the rabbis hit on him for that. You need to make time for your kids. You need yeah. to make time for your family. And Moshe Rabbeinu didn't. And look what happened to his kids. Yeah. Okay, th that's what they say. Yeah. So, and so this, again, in this parable, the Zayat is saying, this person is saying, if I take over for you trees, what am I getting? All I'm picking up is your headaches. So I don't need that. So then they went to the date. The, the date. Tain is date. Yeah, Tain is date. Yeah? So then, So once they really didn't, they couldn't find these Chachamim and these good people. So then what they do, They stopped looking. 
Then they went to the next group. They went to these rich people who were looking to make their lives nice, pleasant. So they said, okay, we'll get this guy to be our leader. And that's why they picked on this date, which is fruit is sweet and pleasant for those, uh, okay. They said to that, date tree, come, be our leader. They also informed that the uh, they were informed that the uh, I'm sorry they knew I'm sorry they also knew that they that this kingship could reach this sort of a person so come and endeavor until you come to you'll you'll be able to grow into your role and this is again the parable so what they were looking for was a man who was rich. And strong and valiant, as she you call the kalkim, but of nukim bechaim aravim, who could sustain them with all these dainties and a nice, pleasant life. So, okay, we can't get the wise guy, literally the wise person. So let's go for a rich guy who can lead us. Well, people will still respect him. Everything's good. Let's find for them. But Tom Elahem Teino. So now that person says. That person says, wait a second, I'm doing this for myself. I'm not interested in leaving my position in order to make you guys rich, basically. Like it says on that day, they more I don't want that one day my home won't have bread and won't have dress. So if I'm working for you, uh, my factory goes down. Yeah. I don't have time for my own factory anymore. I don't have time for anything. Right. Think about what he's saying. I mean, the Malbim was in the 1700s, I believe. 1700s, something like that, 1600s, 1700s. I don't think it was later. But it's, uh, and he's, he's really looking at human psychology here. Mm-hmm. If I leave my pay, place, I'm rich. Great, I'm rich. I made money. I'm I run my 15,000 oh, factories. Oh. But if I now take over for you, which is, by the way, this is a call of Trump. You should yeah, listen to this. Yeah. You, Mr. Trump, he's have all these places. Yeah. And if you become president, you have to let everything fall. Everything. What's to say that in four or eight years that you're going to have something to walk back to? You rely upon kids. your kids. Yeah. I wouldn't rely upon my kids. <laughs> uh, leave me alone. I, I mean, I have to train them really well. But yeah. he's, he's no longer going to, he can't take care of Trump Industries yep. and the United States of America. It's an impossibility. So that's what, so this mob yeah. is speaking directly to Trump. Yep. I know that Trump is watching this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said Trump 15 times. Maybe his daughter is something. His daughter is watching it. <laughs> really, it's a, it's a mob they should listen to. You're not going to do it. And it's because you're going, you can lose everything else. And that's why he says, leave my sweetness, even to my sweetness to visit. And to this, he didn't say there'll be a, a help for Hashem or the man. Fine. So then they say to the vineyard, now they come to the third group. That's in between both of them. Okay, like I said, they come to the middle group. Because wine uh, makes a person's heart happy. And also, it uh, it opens people's minds, as it were. The Amru. And they said, "Bereish kol azvin ana chamar." Fine, Rosh Lemar ki yivchu ish chamid zindot. So let's person uh, pick a person who's wise in in uh, in, the, in the states and the places. Uvetov amidut asher yanhigam bedarche tzedek, and a person who conducts himself with good traits, that he has ways of righteousness, and he would judge people properly. Okay. Uh, according to the laws of the states. So now we're just looking for the Supreme Court. We're looking for good judges. We gave up a guy who knows something. We gave up the rich people. Now we're going for 
And the third, let's get a guy who can at least judge according. He knows the Constitution. Okay, uh, Ted Cruz. He knows the Constitution, and he wants to rule by the Constitution. Fine. What happens? So even he says, so they, they said to the Geffen, a vowel gamma Geffen who, uh, I'm sorry, the Geffen said to them, Aval im gamma geffen true chacham medini. Even though this geffen, this uh, again, this this person was a wise person when it came to laws. Lo yirtzel azov shlimuto. He didn't want to abandon his completeness. Completeness. Shanim sabo that is found a devashem misam ech elokem vanishim because that completeness is what makes Hashem and men happy. Shu tov amidot. Shabarim Tzedaka Vechas of Rachman because he is a good person with his midot and the fruits are uh, righteousness, kindness, compassion. Yismach Banim Elokim, Hashem's happy with them. Betov Hanagilch Yismuchu Ban Hashem, but people are also happy with them. Vyechi Nu Alaitzim, so how am I going? So why would I want to give that up? <laughs> Here I am, everybody loves me. Everybody loves me. I'm a nice guy. I know the halacha. I do. I'm supposed to. I follow the laws. I follow everybody's law. I judge properly. Everything's fine. You come to me. I judge you prom. If I become over you, you're gonna corrupt me. <laughs> what do I need it for? <laughs> so finally, they say to the thorn. Mm. Ah, that's not how it happens. Remember, they went again. They had to go through this count. They went through the people who were wise. Everything else could run things. Good didn't want it because they say you take away from my shlemus you take away from my completeness mm -hmm. they went to the rich people they said do this you take away from my money i'll have nothing left because i can't put up with you people <laughs> okay i'll do it for you but my business falls away then i'll be poor and who needs it, it it's uh then you come to the uh geffen which is in the middle i i know what to do i know how to judge people and i judge people properly because i'm not being paid one way or another i'm not your ruler Absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> right, that's, that's what it comes to. So if I'm ruling over you, I'm not going to have... I'm going to want to maintain my rule. I'm not going to have, what's it called? Uh, even keel of what I want to do. I, I'm going to want to maintain my rule. So I no longer have that complete list. That's what he's saying. If I understand the Malvin, that's what he's saying. So now they come to the thorn bush. And he says, "Az chaldu rashi am sheyu shehem chacham yoshirim." Okay, so that's when the leaders of the people, the hel the elders, and the rich people, and all the stopped looking for a king. They stopped. Az ad ha eitzim no se peri lo yivakshu melech. The the these trees that carried fruit, they no longer look for a king. Why? Kilo matzu, they couldn't find one. Rock, rock, az amdu kol ha'ad ha'etzim. Now, if you look at the verse again in page four and uh, fourteen, ve'yomru kol ha'etzim. It's no longer ha'etzim; it's all of the etzim. So now we dropped our leaders. They're they're gone because they gave up. Now everybody's yelling. Who are they going to go to? The lowest common denominator. Let's now. By the way, if you look at our election, talk about lowest common denominator. That's where we went. With all due respect to both candidates, they're, they're really, Hillary is known to have d deleted emails, 30,000, whatever she deleted, lies through her teeth without uh, thinking twice, and the same thing with Trump. Lies without thinking twice. Lies when he doesn't have to lie. I mean, listen to everybody. The guy can lie and, and lie about lying, and so can she. They're both good liars. <laughs> that's what they do. That's, what? That, that's, that's what they are. But they lie for no reason after a while. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but that's what they're coming for, okay? So, it wants to mean that, that the, we're talking about the trees that don't bear fruit. That's the majority of trees. They look for a king. And, there's, uh, and they are going after one that doesn't have any purpose or fruit, so they chose the thorn bush. That is the lowest of all them. It has no, it's minus all purposes. You can't come close to it. Because it's when you come close to a thorn bush, what's going to happen? You're going to be hurt. Right? You're going to be stuck by the thorns. 
כמו שכתוב, ובליעל וכקוץ מונד מכוחם. והנמשל, so the parable is, שאח השחד הוא המעול, הם בעם לבקש מלך. So after the, the, uh, the, that was the parable. Now this is the application. However you say nimshal in English. The mashal is the parable. Nimshal is how I apply oh. it. I, I forget what you call that. So the, after the people stopped looking for somebody fitting who could run, who could be the king, hit aswehe hamon kulo, all the people gathered together, lahakim alem ish nedar kol shlemo ve'agrua shavkulam, the people decided to get somebody who was less than all of them, umalto hurak ki mila ki male retza v'roma v'chanet. Because and and the only reason they put him up is because he could he had the spear and a, and a, a, and ways to kill people. So that they, they get basically getting a low life. Okay. <laughs> so now the thorn bush says, He quickly accepts it. He's a happy guy. I'll be more than happy to be the king. And uh, he'll search after him. Kishalo, whoops, yeah. Kishalo, al yada shum shleimot, because he's not giving up anything, not giving up any complete list. Rock ba'ashid chamis vavo is hard becoming haughty. Im vavam nachonimo, if the their heart is truly with them. The chaymatan yimahem. That's why he makes a condition. Im be'am evitamim, if in truth and excuse me, completeness. Ataj Moshkim Aiti, you're anointing me, Bau Khasu Basali. So come and be uh, seek refuge in my shade. If you do a sha'atid and will say, but we know that a thorn bush has no shade at all. Bua Shafil Mikulam, because it's the lowest of all these trees. Rock Rosalimo Azvuma Alatham Atem Arzilvanon Haramim. So what he's really saying is all of you big guys, all of you cedar of Lebanon who are ta- all taller, but knows him tashpilu shevetachti. So you lower yourselves to rest under me. Makom shafil umoreid in a place that is low and rebellious. That calls him sheli and my thorns mach even you lechem sel machaset. My thorns that hurt, they'll be to you shade. And protection. The M I N, but if not, if you really don't like me, you're really not doing it from truth. be that you really want to rebel on me. As al techashvu ki lo uchal haralachem mishefakomi. Do not think that I will not be able to hurt you. Lo kain ki achre shaatid muchan l'shveifat aish. It's not true because a thorn bush is prepared to go onto fire. To be, you know, you can light a fire from it. And that fire will eat up the cedars of Lebanon. So he says, you have a choice. I'll be more than happy to be your king. But no one thing. If you're doing it because you really love me and you really want me, so then you have to lower yourself and you have to go with me. And it's going to be pain. It's true. But I'll be ah. your king. If not, and you think that I can't, that you can rebel against me, understand that I can destroy you. Mm. I'm low, but the fire will grab me, and it, psh, it goes all over the place, mm. and it'll, it'll destroy you. So that's really what's going on there. Mm. Okay, and then he says, okay, we'll have to stop there because it's late. Ah. But that, that's, so we're at, we're at 15, 16. So again, let's remember for next week where we are. But that gives you a whole new understanding as to what's going on here, that they, unlike uh, Rashi was very quick. Rashi said, these are the three people that they're talking about. The Malbim is saying it's not three people, it's three specific people. It's talking about three types of people and why these types of people said no as compared to the thorn bush, which would say yes. And that's ultimately going to be Avimelech, the thorn bush. They're saying Avimelech is a thorn bush. Okay, we'll stop here.